In this Atheist Sunday School, we're going to talk about, about getting into heaven. Lesson 2. How to get into heaven. Last week's lesson taught us about the unconditional promise. And these are Bible promises, of course. Man may receive its benefit without doing anything about it, either accepting nor rejecting nor ignoring it. This week's lesson teaches another of God's promises, which is a conditional promise, however. We will learn the setting <coughs> for the promise. The promise itself and the recipients of the promise. The discussion of the promise and the person who made it makes up the lesson. The promise is found in John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. Of course, you can go to KingJamesBibleOnline.org to, um, you know, see these passages. It was Jesus who spoke this promise. He began, so be it, so be it, or so be it, so be it, or amen, blah, blah. Let's think about the setting for the promise. It is given in John 5, 1 through 23. Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of one of Jew the Jewish feasts. He was walking around the city and came to a pool, which is located near the wall of the city, near the gate, which is called the Sheep Gate. This was just north of the temple site. The pool was called the Pool of Bethsaida. Oh yeah, notice that Bethsaida. B E F. I'm sorry, B E T H E S D A. You know, there's a, a, the game developer by that name. I believe they made Skyrim. They did a very good job. If you figured it out, if you can't figure that out, the you know the correlation, you know the Bethsaida. Why that's kind of funny. That and then you know. These video games made by Bethesda, Bethesda, leave a thumbs down if you can't figure it out. Or if you don't even bother, want to bother looking up the verses because, you know, I mean, you're a Christian and you don't want to bother looking up the verses, leave a thumbs down because, you know, to show that you don't really care about your Bible, leave the thumbs down. There were five porches around the pool. Many crippled, handicapped, and sick people were on these porches, waiting for the time that the angel would come to stir the waters of the pool. The first person who entered the pool after the stirring of the waters would be healed of his infirmities. A man who had... Okay, if you can enter the pool, what does that kind of tell you about magic and stuff like that? You know, that's no different than having like a lucky rabbit's foot. Of course, that foot wasn't so lucky for the rabbit, but... Of course, it's like having a rabbit's foot. It's no different in a way. You know, it, rabbit foot ain't going to help you or anything. Neither is this pool. I mean, come on. And why is it, does the pool doesn't exist now? Gee, I wonder why. A man who had an ailment for 38 years was there in the crowd. And nobody thought to help him. They're all like, ah, oh, screw it. We're going to just be rude and a-holes and just screw this guy over and we'll heal ourselves. You know, this poor bastard has been here for 38 years. That sounds like a human be what a human being would do. I mean, I think we see it all the time. Of course, people think they become Christians. They're going to change from that. I have not seen that. And if you are a type of person that would be jerk enough to do this, Leave a thumbs down. He had been there for a long time. Jesus then came along. He walked up to the man and asked him if he would like to be made whole. Of course the man would. Jesus told him to pick up his little bedroll and to walk. The man obeyed the Lord and was healed. Jewish leaders saw him carrying his bed on the Sabbath day and scolded him for doing so. They asked him who it was who told him to carry his bed. Maybe then, and you know, back way back in Exodus and Deuteronomy, they shouldn't say, well, if you see a man collecting sticks on the Sabbath, kill his ass, you know, and make it so, make it a commandment, all, commandment also, not only, you know, commandment that can be punished by death. Maybe they would not have been so critical of this and so critical of Jesus. Maybe they've been more accepting. I thought he does kind of break, you know, the you know, in Deuteronomy when it tells you how to spot a false prophet, he kind of fits into that false prophet. You know, just saying, you know, in Deuteronomy. The man could not tell him who it was, not until after he had met Jesus again, this time in the temple. Jesus admonished him there to keep out of sin so that he would not suffer a worse problem than that from which he had been healed. Okay, see, this is what I like. They tell, well, okay, I, I get it. But still, it's just funny. This is what confuses a lot of people who believe you can lose your salvation and those that believe in eternal security. 
There are those that believe you can lose your salvation. They'll say, well, when it mentions eternal salvation, it doesn't mean eternal. When it says everlasting, it doesn't mean everlasting. You can still lose it. And this kind of this passage just kind of seemed to mention that. But then again, the people who believe in eternal security or easy believism, as some call it, will say, well, no, look, Jesus is telling you if you continue to sin, you're going to be punished for it. And that's exactly what we believe. You cannot continue to sin. You can't sin and win. Man then told the religious authorities that it was Jesus who had healed him and told him to carry his bed now that he could walk. The Jewish leaders questioned Jesus by his authority to do this. Jesus explained his relationship with the Heavenly Father, including his explanation of this blessed promise found in John 5.24. The Jewish leaders were asking what right Jesus had to order that same contrary to the law. Jesus told them to listen to him. His words would have eternal life. His words told them how to have eternal life. Well, I like how he contradicts, you know, you know how God contradicts himself. Because Jesus is supposed to be God. First, it's a sin to carry, you know, do any work on the Sabbath. And then all of a sudden, it's okay. Well, if you're trying to prove that you're son of God and trying to get people, you know, to follow you, maybe you should follow your own freaking rules, at least at that time. You know, you can at least explain what well, these rules were for a different time for them because it was trying to teach them this, this, and this. Now, you know, you guys have kind of grown into this. You know better. So we're going to do this, this, and this. You know, I'm just saying, you know. Here who Jesus is. Jesus is. Jesus' identity was and is made clear by God. Jesus is the creator. Jesus not only created the world, the universe, and all things in them, but also set up the patterns of Authorities in the world. Jesus is God. Isaiah 9, 6. Romans 9, 5. Matthew 12, 8. John 5, 17 through 19. He is one with the Father. He is therefore the Lord of the Sabbath. He had every right to tell the man to pick up his bed if he had been healed. Jesus is the Son of God. Luke 1, 35. Matthew 3, 17. And John 5, 20. Jesus' home had been in heaven for making his interest into the world. He chose to be born after the fashion of men. He had stripped himself of all the glory that, he, that had been his in heaven. And was born of a woman. Jesus, the judge of all men. John 5, 21 to 30. Revelations 14 to 7. He knows those people who should inherit eternal life. He knows those people who must be doomed to eternal punishment. This judgment is, of course, based upon what they had done by trusting Jesus as their Savior. You know, I like this little correlation I just thought of, though. I mean, I, you, you might like it, you might not. You might think it's just plain stupid because I am stupid. But, okay. Okay, okay. You know, when I give exams and stuff or labs, you know, it's, I, it's very easy for me to grade if everyone just, you know, if everyone just simply gets every answer right, I can just give a hundred. Easy. One, zero, zero. And if, of course, if everybody cheats, I catch their ass, give everybody zero, 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 zero. Easy. Easy to average all that. No work. Think about that. No work at all. Or I just give them the answers and I don't have to grade. Or, you know, give one group of answers, you know, have the answers there. I already know they're going to get an A. So I just put a hundred. A, 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 A. Now here's how this, just Jesus is going to judge you. And this is considered judging. It's not really judging. It's nonsense. It's stupid to call it judging. If, you're, if you just simply accept him and you laugh, you go to heaven. If you don't accept him because you don't have the evidence or you never heard of him or you have a different religion because you were born in a different country, you came from a different family or whatever reason or, or you were born before he came, you go to hell. That's not exactly judging. You already made your decision beforehand. You know, it's like that episode of Star Trek uh, where, where uh, Jean-Luc Picard is... I'm sorry, not Jean-Luc Picard because it's D DS9. I forgot. The, the captain of DS9 and uh, whatever that Cardassian guy that was, ends up being the bad guy, you know. He tells them, you know, I already know, we already know your judgments are beforehand. Please, can you do this? Because they already, before they even have a trial, they already have passed judgment before the trial. It's the same thing with this religion. 
It makes no sense. Most other religions, you know, if you're a crappy person, you're going to suffer. Either you're going to go to hell or you'll be born as a cockroach. You know, if you're a good person, then you get to go to heaven. It makes more sense. Hear what Jesus has done upon the basis of this one act. Jesus can offer everlasting life to all who will accept him as their personal Savior. And remember this, every sect of Christianity, including Catholics, all of them, they believe that they are right and they are the ones going to heaven and others are not. They're, they'll tell you the Holy Spirit tells me so. Yeah, well, good luck. Because remember, this Jesus is going to judge you. And his judging, is, you think is fair, of course. If you're the one that has to go to hell because you believe wrong, you might not consider it so fair now, will you? He was the perfect sacrifice for sin. He suffered sin's punishment for us. Here, what only Jesus can do. Only He can give eternal life. Only He can take anyone to heaven. Here, what you must do. You must believe the words of the Father. John 5, 24. Believe who Jesus is. Believe what Jesus did. Believe in the necessity for Jesus' work of salvation. Believe that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Now, replace Jesus with Jesus. You know, Jesus melted on the pizza for your sins. He, he melted your sins away. And then pray. Do that prayer I've done in my other videos. I even did a video called Jesus died for, melted for your sins. Conclusion, the person who has trusted Jesus as the Savior has passed from death unto life. The very instant that he says, Lord Jesus, I recognize my need for you, and I now receive you as my Savior, then his eternity is completely changed. Memory verse John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. Well, that's it. Bye.